I'm Andrew Spalding, a graduate from Savannah College of Art and Design. I have worked in the animation industry as a background illustrator, sometimes a character designer, and sure as hell often a prop redesigner on more than one occasion. I've had six years worth of experience. When we last were hanging out, we were both students at art school, particularly on that front. I don't know about you, but I feel like, especially at SCAD, there's sort of this onus on you that you have to succeed in a very specific way. And did you feel the same thing? And if so, how did you deal with it upon graduation? I've had to relabel what it is that I'm doing, what I am, as far as career is concerned, several times over. Graduated with a degree in sequential arts, which I guess is under communications arts or something like that. Instead of doing comics or storyboards or anything related to that, I ended up doing background illustrations for animated shows. Okay, that's cool. But that's not what I got the degree in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my degree is visual storytelling. When you're putting together a set, in a manner of speaking, it's neat, but I'm not going to pretend that it's the most fulfilling thing. You're creating an environment for the characters to wreck or utilize to whatever need the directors have. As far as how to get over that, how to accept that, at the end of the day that becomes a case of I need the money in order to be able to pay off my loans. <laughs> I need to be able to pay rent. Uh, this is at least semi-related to what I have a degree in. At least I'm still illustrating. <laughs> yeah. So you have to kind of look at the silver linings to what you've been presented with. Uh, it's the only way you're going to keep any speck of sanity in the chaos that can be working in a studio, yeah. um, which I'm sure you can relate to. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I, honestly, I can only think of maybe one or two people in our entire friend group who actually got like cherry picked right out of right out of school and by a studio doing exactly what they were studying. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Um, one of the things that SCADs lured me in with anyway was um, of course saying that they were business oriented. Sorry, this is a bit of a tangent. They had their student body, uh, their graduating student body getting between like an 80 or 90 percent industry acceptance rate. What they failed to tell you is that that industry might be working as a pizza delivery boy or <laughs> Working as a secretary, they don't tell you that it's the industry you had your degree in. <laughs> it's, there's no small print. It's depressing at how frequently, how many of our friends, how many of our peers didn't and have yet to get into what they want a career in. It's kind of off. I looked out. I was incredibly lucky. Uh, two months after graduating, living at my parents' house for about two months, when I randomly got a call from Bento Box Studios. It was out of the blue. I hadn't applied. They just found my website that was hideous. Uh, but had enough of my college work to say, oh, that guy's style is close enough to what we want for the show. Would you like a job? I was like, yes, please. Yes. <laughs> but that, that is not the standard story. I've had a number of friends more talented than me who have, they haven't been able to get a job for three or five years. And they're still working random day labor jobs or what have you uh, in order just to make ends meet. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, oh, yeah, no, I get you. I, uh... I graduated my, the second time with my master's in 2013, and I didn't mm -hmm. actually enter the VFX industry until 2015, and it certainly wasn't for lack of trying. And the only reason I went back from my master's is because when I graduated the first time in 2011, I couldn't get a job anywhere, and so it was a move of desperation. So you could say from 2011 to 2015, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't work in the industry, I studied it. That's another thing, even if you do manage to get into your industry, I imagine, I hope, Lord do I hope that VizFX is a bit more stable than background illustration. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. <laughs> but the, the problem with working for the animation studio in a city that doesn't have many other studios for you to work from is that when your major studio is out of work for you, you're going to be without work for six months to a year. Yeah. And there's a damn thing you can do about it. Nope. During that time, they, they put me on unemployment and that ran out after three months. And then, of course, all that during all that time, you're required to apply to 20 jobs a week. So over that three-month span, I applied to over 200 jobs. Oh my God. And I heard back from one restaurant. <laughs> yeah. The longest stretch that I had where I was officially unemployed and desperately trying to get back into the industry was eight months. I had to go through all of my savings just to pay rent. Sucked. <laughs> so where, where are you right now? Are you, are you in Georgia uh, still? I'm still in Atlanta, still in Georgia. Any students graduating, they have to keep in mind where their industry is. They have to keep in mind where it's established and where it's growing. They have to try try their best to do that research, no matter what field they're in. Seeing as Atlanta is a relatively young animation city, it's big for vis effects, it's big for live action filming and that kind of thing because of all the tax incentives and whatnot. But it is a juvenile industry for animation, 2D animation specifically. Mm -hmm. 
So when you're out of work here, there's only one or two other companies you can attempt to work for. Yeah. And if they don't accept you, or if they accept you and then say, eh, you're not good enough, bye, you're SOL. <laughs> but that's that's just how it is. That's It's a business. For sure. They don't care what your skill set is. They don't have work for you, or if you can't keep up with the production, you're gone. You're toast. Unfortunately, there is, or at least there has not been, to my knowledge, any variety of union or guild for animators here in Atlanta. Which means whenever work comes from California or Canada or what have you, we have to accept it and just be happy with the results. There's nobody to save our backs. That said, the studios here are not terrible. Some of them certainly have their flaws. <laughs> But most people, the one benefit to working in a studio is that you're around other creative people going through the same shit. And having that friend group, having that structure can help stop you from going into a pit of misery that you can't get out of for months on end. Because again, you're in the same boat with other people who have also just been let go 60 at a time because the studio doesn't have work. And that's just something you have to get used to. That's, that's how the industry functions. If you're in California, there are other studios you can bounce around to. I've had a number of friends move out there and their studio they prefer will let them go after a four or five month year long project. But luckily there's someplace else they can do some work at least for for the hiatus. But you have to learn how to play the political game if you want to stay working. I have accidentally intimidated a couple of superiors. Not intending to, I was just trying to get my work done when I'm in a work mode. I am, let me do my work and leave me the hell alone. Not a good attitude, shouldn't do that. But upon doing that, People that are up above you will start saying that you're obstinate, you're not willing to listen to critique and that sort of thing, when it, the reality is, I know what the director wants because the director told me and they just hadn't told you yet. <laughs> <laughs> in order to survive in the industry, you have to be willing to break the mold and be flexible. You have to be putty as opposed to a brick. You can't just have the one skill set. Oh, Lord help you if you have a style that is set to you, that's the best style that everyone loves. Just because your friends and family love it doesn't mean it's going to sell. Charisma, being able to be sociable and charming and talk with whoever the hell is in charge, that is a far more valuable skill than I was ever taught. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I can have my moments when I'm around people I'm comfortable with. I can chat all day about every topic under the sun. If I'm around people that I have been inspired by, if I'm around people that I think I can actually influence my career, I become a recluse. I don't, my mouth goes cotton. I can't speak. Wow, <laughs> and then it's one of those giant cases of foot and mouth disease, and it's just, ah! You have to learn how to project yourself and prove that you are a charming, capable, competent person. And that is a constant battle and a constant case of change. You cannot be one thing at a given time. And if you do end up losing your job because of there's no work or what have you, relabeling yourself and figuring out what the hell can I do? You have to look at all the things you're capable of and determine which ones actually satisfy you, which ones actually make you happy. That is that is a long slog of self-reflection. You always feel as a student like, God, these, these assignments, they're so cut and dry, they're so formulaic, but then you leave and you're like, oh crap, I had so much creative freedom. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Everything, once you get into any, any studio that has a set style, anything that has all the model sheets put together, all the palettes are chosen for you, all creative, creativity goes out the window. I've been put doing drawing the interior of a car and the subsequent exterior that had to do a rolling background. Okay, simple enough. For my own reference, for my own reference, I drew one of the characters for scale. For me. On a layer that could be turned off and on in Toon Boom Harmony. Easy. Mm -hmm. Because I gave that character a mermaid fin instead of legs, something that's not going to be the show, not going to be animated, I was told... How dare you? What is wrong with you? What the? Why did you do this? Like, it's not even going to be in the show. It's a layer that can be turned off and deleted. But in the movie See, King Arthur, I painted the Sistine Chapel, but replaced all of the uh, nude figures with Nicolas Cage. You don't see it any time in the movie, but I did it for my own amusement. There were many laughs to be had from my supervisors, so I don't like. It's blowing my mind that you're getting in trouble for this stuff. It's a hit or miss. It all depends on who's in charge. It's just a matter of being able to read the, the temperature, I guess, of the studio you're at. Where would you say that the private art education failed to prepare you for the creative life? There are a number of ways in which they failed to prepare me, um, but one of the biggest failings, they didn't bother to teach us anything about surviving as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. They taught us nothing, nothing about surviving as a small-time artist. I lucked out that I was able to take a course called The Pitch with Ray Goto. Phenomenal professor, phenomenal class. We were taught how to do an elevator pitch. We were taught how to prepare a presentation, which is cool. Yeah, sounds great. And I suggest any student who can take it, take it. As far as being able how to promote yourself 
on the internet, on how to network with people in the industry. As far as how to just know your worth as an artist, none of that was taught to us. None of it. I have undersold my paintings, my illustrations, my commissions for years because I know that most of the people I'm trying to pitch to are cheapskates. And that's not to all of my patrons, of course. A lot of them have been perfectly good people who, if they could afford to, they'd pay me more. And I love them for that. But the fact of the matter is, most of the people that I'm trying to sell myself to can't afford me. <laughs> and that's a terrible re realization, is that though I'd love to do the highest quality of caliber of work, quality of work for whomever, I literally cannot afford the time to invest to it. I'm not gonna get enough to do so. And it's taken me six years more, if we consider the fact that I started painting portraits back in high school, to figure out that I'm worth, my time is worth a lot more than I'm getting paid. There, there was one illustration that I spent over 100 hours on, and I only got 200 bucks. I got paid less than $1.50 an hour. For any time that we are on hiatus, any time that we've been canned, we need to be able to pay our bills and be able to eat. The only reason I've been able to maintain a semi-stable life is because my partner was willing to help keep me afloat because I helped keep him afloat in college. So it's a give and take. It's a case of having the structure and the people that love you and think you can actually manage and be productive and be successful uh, step in and help you. You have to accept help. It hurts. Oh, my pride took a beat for that. <laughs> getting out of that hole, getting out of that misery, it takes a lot. And it hurts like hell to realize that you need help. Yeah. I'm an independent person. I don't like relying on other people. But there's a point in time which you just have to say, I can't survive otherwise. And once you do that, things start picking up. You start getting out of your slump, you start being able to draw again, you start putting yourself in positions and being around things that either inspire you or encourage you to do better. Go to a gallery showing of somebody whose work is garbage and say, I can do better than that. Or go to a museum and see Hans Holbein's or Norman Rockwell portraits or whoever inspires you. Yeah. And just go look and say, oh, wow, they spend a better part of 40 or 50 hours of working on that. It's amazing. Can I do that? I can do that. Let me try to do that. And you just have to pick yourself up and do it. Your self-confidence, your health, and mm -hmm. the quality of your work, like they're all so related when you don't think they okay. are. If I've gone too long without being around people I care about, or if I've spent too long looking at an illustration, I stop seeing what I'm working on, and it just becomes a pile of garbage. Even if it's good, I can't see past the fact that it's garbage. I need to be away from it. You need to be around people. They have a second set of eyes. They allow you to see more than what you are doing. We're artists. No matter what type of art you're creating, you're creating something someone else will see. So you're forging a connection with someone else, at least one other person. And if you aren't absorbing the viewpoints or energy of other people or other things, then how in the world are you going to effectively communicate? Your work will become stagnant if you aren't around life. We're both people that imitate life. That's what we do. It's the small details, the dirty sock on the floor, the dishes in the sink, those those small details that help create an environment and make it real. We're going to go like full reverse here. Would you say that your art education helped you? Uh, what were the benefits, do you think, of going to SCAD? They had some of the best professors from recent that either were still active in the industry. Having people that are so fresh, knowing what sort of things are required, what sort of things are wanted, you couldn't ask for better. It helps prepare you, not necessarily for what I was talking about as far as the freelancing and entrepreneurial or whatever, but just as far as the techniques, as far as what sort of things are appealing, what sort of things sell. I thoroughly miss being able to brainstorm with dozens of other artists in the room. Why does this piece work? Why does this piece not work? What could they do to fix it? What could they do to make it better? I love that. Since they had state-of-the-art technology for the time, we were able to learn and actually get ahead of a lot of our peers. I had a number of friends who went to other art schools. I'm not going to list them. But when they saw what I was doing and what I knew about using Photoshop or using Toon Boom Harmony or After Effects or any of those things, they were clueless. They didn't know anything about them. And they only knew a little bit from YouTube tutorials or reading in one of the manuals. They didn't have the hands-on shortcuts that we were privy to. I will forever adore SCAD's library and archives. That was one of my favorite getaways while we were there. However useful that all may have been and with as much fun as it could be at times, a lot of being able to network moderately useful connections, but knowing how to utilize your friends and connections, they don't teach you that. I hate using people. So how do you approach a friend who's made it somewhere? I can't. It feels, it's awkward. If it's a friend you haven't talked to in years, say, hey, I'm unemployed right now, or I'm freelancing and it's paying garbage. Help! <laughs> I actually did that, and it was awful. Because <laughs> I was struggling, um, I couldn't really hold down a big job, I hadn't broken into the industry yet, 
it was just a very low point. And so I called uh, a friend who had made it right out of college at a gigantic enviable studio. But they're still there, you know, they have some That's fabled awesome. permanence. Uh, and I called them and I was like, hey, is there anything you can do? Like, I'll sweep the floor, like, I don't care. Just, can you get me in here? And they just kind of blew me off. I've never talked to them since then. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how to work it's that. It's an awkward situation. There's no skirting around that fact. I've had a couple of friends that when I was working for Bento Box, they asked me to give in a good word for them, which I did. And, you know, they showed the case of portfolio. And then they never heard back from the studio and they're wondering, what, what happened? Didn't you talk to me, talk to them about me? And it's like, yes, I, I can't do anything else. I am low on the roster of important people at that studio. <laughs> you might have a connection, you might know somebody who's working at a studio, but it amounts to nothing if they have no influence. It's a huge learning curve once you're out of college. Yes. There are a lot of things they do not prepare you for. With a class environment, you'll feel intimidated and insulted by some critiques from your professors, but they are nothing compared to the real world. Nothing. You have to be prepared to work with a lot of indecisive people in a production industry that doesn't have time to be indecisive. Yes. That's and you have to sometimes also be able to put the words in their mouth to help them along. But you have to figure out which people accept that and which ones don't. It's a giant game, for lack of a better way of putting it, of who is politically savvy and who is not, and how can you help them or listen to people as often as you can. If people's paychecks start coming into question, it's not illegal. They'll tell you it's illegal. They'll tell you it's a huge faux pas. You, you and a friend who are doing the same kind of work, working the same kind of hours, they will tell you, well, we hired you for very different reasons, for different skill sets. We're doing the same work. What are you talking about? You just can't do that. You're not allowed to discuss that sort of thing. Why? If you question too often, you get in trouble. If you could uh, and talk to yourself right in high school, looking at colleges, I want to be an artist. What's, <laughs> what's the, the main piece of advice you would give? young Andrew. Though it's tedious and exhausting, apply to every scholarship and grant on the face of the planet. It is not worth getting $200,000 in debt, dreading paying it back, and wondering if you're going to have enough money to pay both rent and your student loans. It's terrifying. It is one of the things, this is another small bash against SCAD, and I'm sorry for it. The representatives that came to my school and pitched themselves to me promoted themselves as a business-oriented art school. What they don't mention is that SCAD's business-oriented school is that SCAD is a business and it's oriented and worried about itself. It's unconscionable that you would charge so much for future artists. I'm, you know, in my early 30s and I'm living like a college student because I've got these <laughs> gigantic uh, student loans every month and I'm working in my industry, you know, somehow. I'm currently freelancing and doing some work kind of related to my industry, other work not at all related to my industry. Right now I'm working for two amazing uh, guys that I'm in order to just make ends meet, I'm printing t-shirts with two 400 degree iron presses because it's a steady job. I recently ended up losing a fairly sizable gig because I made the moronic mistake of getting in between two hormonal teenage puppies while they were going Tasmanian. And you know, somewhere in the scuffle, I ended up getting bit through, uh, from my thumb all the way through the meat of my drawing and painting hand. That put me out of commission for two months. Luckily, the little bastard missed the tendons and any vital arteries, so it's, it's full functioning again. But that lost me tons of work. But that's life. You have to be prepared for the unexpected, which, how do you do that? <laughs> there is such a thing, I found this out, there is such a thing as uh, insurance for your hands. For your tools. Oh man. It's a variety of life insurance. I can't afford it yet, but whenever I can, you can bet your ass I'm gonna do it for what usually takes me ten or twenty minutes with my dominant hand, it took me two hours. That's not good for production. <laughs> On the bright side, that means that it can be trained, but that's months of extra training. You have to relearn how to do everything with it. We weren't taught stretches, we weren't taught how to be how to work ergonomically or effectively for just our tools. That's another thing to consider. <laughs> also, uh, one other thing to add on to that was consider going to a community college first to build up your portfolio before going through your final two years getting your bachelor's. Financially speaking, it would have been a far sounder choice to go to a cheap community college, to develop a portfolio, learn some of the industry techniques, and then go get the fancy degree. Yeah. Germany will give you a full ride minus tools yeah. and materials so long as you're willing to learn a little, a little bit of German. They have classes for you to do that. I'd have to look up the specific programs again, but they exist, they're out there. None of those were options that were presented to us. Oh no, no. no. Like we, we live in such an American bubble that the concept of leaving for university was immediately laughed off by anyone I would talk to. So. Yeah. 
or they'd be poo-hooed as, oh, those degrees aren't worth as much as ours. It's the same damn material. You'll learn the same stuff, you will get the certification, like, it does not matter. If you're saving money, you're saving money. The other thing is, I've had other peers, they dropped out after the first quarter at SCAD, or at some other art school. But the thing is, because their portfolios were fantastic, because they knew what the industry wanted, because they went to the conventions to talk to those people, they uh, are now working as working on their own shows at Nickelodeon, or, you know, starting their own feature film pitches for DreamWorks. You don't even need the degree! <laughs> exactly. Finding that out, I think, was one of the biggest... It blew my mind, and was a real kick in the ego. We made yeah. the choices we made. and uh... We made the choices we made, and they weren't <laughs> the worst choices, uh, and yeah. we got to work with amazing professors, and I have to remind myself that occasionally. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there, are, there are benefits to what we did. Advice to people working in the entertainment industry that still want to be artists on the side, do plein air painting, be around other people that do it, because with your schedule, you're gonna become exhausted and spread thin. So having those other people there, build that community, be around other creative minds because it'll be the only thing to help keep you going. Maybe not the only thing, but sure, it'll sure as hell help. Make sure you're really passionate about it because it is a it is a slog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's been great talking with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Best Good of to see luck. You. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked what you saw, give us a like. If you didn't, don't. Yeah.